what is going on youtube savage here in today's video we're going to be spectating breaking down and analyzing a high kill gameplay this gameplay is from one of my dudes lens effect he's a streamer over on twitch i will link all of his social medias in the description below so make sure you guys check him out now this is a 30 plus kill game you guys have been wanting more intense games on the channel so here we are but before we get into the video if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel we are closing in on 100,000 subscribers also leave a like on the video let's get this video to 2,000 likes not just for me but for our boy lens effect who was kind enough to send the footage our way and lastly make sure you guys follow me on facebook twitter instagram and join our discord community and utilize the looking for groups pages to your advantage to find some teammates that you can actually get some wins with there have been hundreds of wins that have been taking place in the discord community so make sure you guys are a part of that but without further ado let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay all right so here we are again this was pulled from one of his live streams so he's going to be talking with the chat and things like that but that's fine now normally i will cover their face up with my cam just so we don't flood the screen with a bunch of different cameras but i want you guys to notice what his eyes are doing a lot of people don't take into account how important it is to always be scanning everything on your screen. A lot of people just stay super tunnel vision on their crosshair and maybe occasionally will glance at one or two things. But for the most part, most players run around um, not popping plates, not reloading their guns, not paying attention to mini map, not even looking at the kill counter. So I want you guys to kind of focus on what he's doing and also watch his eyes. The eyes tell everything. Well, let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, here we are landing at Superstore. And of course, if you guys are knocking on those uh 20 or 30 kill gameplays that you want to go to superstore but you got to be fast look how fast he loots i always tell you guys get in and get out as fast as possible that's exactly what he's doing he's not sitting here reading the description of all the weapons not sitting here guessing or looking around or even paying attention to what's not near him now as you guys see on the mini map there are dots popping up to the northwest he notices that as well also come down to pick the right guy, gun for the right fight he had the xm4 out swapped to his close range uzi and was able to win that fight relatively easy Name me daddy. I'm gonna name you little baby Matt, bitch. My man lens effect, always a positive person, man. Such a, such a beast, dude. We do have a person in front of us at a 300. Let's go ahead and push that asshole. Now we could jump over the boxes and push them or we could flank from the south hand side, which I like this play a lot better. Guys, we'll sit and cross right here. Now I want you guys to notice as well. He didn't just ADS when he saw the enemy and try to find him in his scope. He instantly snapped to him, then ADS and shot the enemy. Remember. You guys ADS and you're trying to drag scope to the enemy, your sensitivity is going to be a lot more strict because you're in your scope. So it's going to take you a little bit longer to flick to the enemy. So always try to line up your little dot right here um, with the enemy before you get in the scope. That's exactly what it did. That's why the enemy had the drop on us. Technically, they shot us first, but we were able to go ahead and win the fight because we were a little bit more accurate. But I don't think that's the guy we originally saw on the minimap pop up. That was to the 300 earlier. Now, chat. So I do believe there's another person here for sure, right? Superstore. All right, there's another one. Now, what you want to do in Superstore, especially, and it's probably would have been the first thing I grabbed, was grab a scavenger. And the thing with scavengers is you want to go ahead and get it because you're Superstore and you're here for kills. That's the whole point of being here is you want to get kills. But should you die, if you pick up that scavenger and you don't actually do any of the scavs, guess what? When you come back from the gulag, you'll have the ability to finish those scavenger objectives and then go ahead and buy your loadout. So it looks like it's exactly where he's going to go ahead and get the scavs. The trick now, chat. All right, there's the third guy. It's probably the guy that we saw at a 300 earlier. A contract here, so in case I die. I swear to God, I didn't watch this. Oh, like yes. I oh. spawn right back. <laughs> Look, I'm not laughing at Lin's effect. The timing of that was absolutely impeccable. I love it. I love the fact that I recommended it. He already knew what to do and he was telling his chat. And then on top of that, he actually did die after picking it up. So we'll actually be able to see it take place, the actual strategy behind that. Now, most of this is common knowledge to you top tier players or even intermediate players that are watching this video. But a lot of you guys, again, most players are still trying to learn this game. So it's all a part of learning and make sure you guys are utilizing techniques like this to your advantage. All right, here we are landing Superstore again, coming back to finish our scav and hopefully kill the leftovers that are here. Hey, right, let's go, Joe. So because the enemy UAV was okay. just called in, I'm going to go ahead and assume that there might be somebody by the buy station. Um, I might even go out there and peek it a little bit to see if there is and hopefully catch okay. him out in the open. Could I sneak into the DMs? All right, and just like that, you see the loadout drop to our right-hand side. You take some shots. We got a guy falling in as well. This could be a couple kills we can get. Nice little easy boom. And then, of course, the guy who called in his loadout drop as well. All right, we got our plates. 
We got a little bit better of a, a weapon selection. Yeah, blue raspberry is really good. This FFAR, I mean, not this one in particular, but the gun in general, that's going to be part of the next meta. I'm almost positive of it. People sleep on how good the FFAR, the M16, all these other guns are just because the DMR is so broken. But watch, guys. There's, it's not like when the DMR gets nerfed, meta is going to go away at all. There's a lot of other guns that are, I would say, relatively broken that people just aren't using right now. Once you guys see two, every time he gets shot, we not do that? he pops back and changes his position. He's using the corner of the building to his advantage. So a lot of people, and I always try to tell you guys, stop sitting on ledges, blah, blah, blah. And you're all like, but Savage, if I want to see the enemy, how am I supposed to keep my eyes on where the enemy's at if I'm sitting here hiding from them? You're not hiding, you're repositioning. You want to keep peeking the enemy, but you want to do it from different areas. Don't just stand there and try to find the enemy and allow him to pop you in the head, right? I love the fact that lens effects going back and forth. He's not ever standing in one spot for a long period of time. That way, anybody who's looking can't get an easy headshot on him, as well as the guy we're actually in combat with. This is exactly what I'm trying to tell you guys. When you're in a fight with anybody and you're on a ledge, you want to keep peeking it. You want to keep moving around. You don't have to unpeek for like six minutes. Just peek, unpeek, reposition, peek, unpeek, and just keep that entire process going. All right, Lens Effect, knowing that the enemy was plating up, going ahead and utilizing his absolute savageness to not plate up, jump down there and just ball out. I love it. I love it. Also got the Satchel boys. Woo, thank you. All right. Satchel, trophy system. This guy came in hot, bro. All right, we have an enemy in front of us. Enemy's pretty ballsy. I'm not gonna lie. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the Pelican, I'm gonna be honest. The enemy assumes we only have a sniper. I don't know why he assumes that. He saw us have an AR out, but he assumes we only have a sniper right now. So he's gonna try to move closer to us to get a close range fight going on. So hopefully lens effect can't snipe him. But again, lens effect's got an FFAR. So it's kind of a dumb idea for the enemy to put himself out here like this. So all lens is gonna do now is switch his weapon and blow this dude away. But Savage, you always try to tell us to push snipers and get close range combat. Yes, but use cover. This guy's coming across an entire parking lot to try to kill us. So he's probably not even gonna make it to cover before he dies. Not really surprised. Okay. I don't either. Take it. Yeah, nice. Could be a decent game, chat. Could be a decent freaking game, huh? What do we think? What do we think? We get our loadout going, get a UAV going as well. What is this lobby, bro? <laughs> got another guy inside the Superstorm, maybe on top. We got another one back to the building we were just at. They're actually okay right now. Well, actually, he just, he literally just died as of six seconds ago. Right? No? A lot of people here. All right. Right now, there are a lot of enemies. One just died, JK. But this guy's gonna be an easy kill right here. Now, who do you who do you fight? Target prioritization, who do we choose? Do we choose the guy that's close to us in Superstore? Or do we choose the guy that's at a whole different building? Well, I mean, technically this guy's closer, but remember the guy on top of the roof or maybe in the second floor is gonna be camped up. So it's gonna take a little bit longer to push. Plus this guy's not going anywhere. He's camping, right? He'll be there for later. We can save him for leftovers, maybe even dessert. Um, This guy right here, he, he's gonna be out in the open. So this is gonna be a perfect opportunity to go ahead and focus this guy and get an easy snipe. Or I'm sorry, easy DMR. <laughs> I love that. We're we're moving moving ourselves using cover, using the vehicles cover, and then popping up to get the easy headshot, and then following up the execution. Now again, like I said, the dude on top of Superstore is gonna be sitting there camping, waiting, but he's gonna be following the bullets. And here he is, about to peek us most likely because he heard a shooting. Good on the enemy spotting the DMR, saying, "Screw this, I'm off, I'm out, no thank you." And now he's going to put us in a position. Yeah, I don't know what the hell he was doing, bro. That was weird. I don't, I've never understood why enemies decide I'm going to randomly spade nades or tacticals or something like that if you're not going to follow up. Let's just say, what if? What if that actually hit us? We'd be stunned for five seconds, right? Would the enemy push us? No, because it would take him longer to push us than anything else. Yeah, that's definitely a bot on top of that building. I don't understand. Another guy on top of rooftop right here, going, putting ourselves right in the open to get the DMR headshots. That's just pure confidence with your weapon, bro. That's just pure confidence in your aim, actually. Not even your weapon. That's just confidence in your aim. 
Just bailed out of the vehicle, not even parking it, jumping out in the middle of the open, risking it all to blow that kid out of the sky. What an animal. 2020 is almost finito. You're right, dude. All right, look, I also want you guys to notice right now that he's got a bounty on him and it hasn't changed the way he's played, right? And again, a lot of people get bounties and they're like, oh shit. And they just start freezing up and playing completely different than they would normally play. Lens effects like, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and get ghost class. I'm going to sit here and drive around. I might try to find this guy. Who knows? And here we are going for the scavenger, hopefully to keep racking up on money so we can utilize UAVs to his advantage and maybe self res as well. All right, here we are finishing up the scavenger and we have $8,900. Now we can get a self res and get a UAV in the air also. Now, I want you guys to notice how he's always going back to his vehicle, right? When it comes to solos, you've got to use vehicles. You have to. All right, so here we are going to the buy station and get our UAVs and hopefully our self res as well. Maybe even another UAV. Yeah, there we go. He's not even going to use self res. He says, screw it, bro. I don't need that shit. Confidence, bro. Confidence, man. Driving the vehicle to the building. Going ahead inside. Easy, easy claps. I don't know what he was doing downstairs still. So as far as the enemy's concerned in this position, we knew that he should have saw us on the mini map driving towards him. So he should have done one of two things. One, gone to the rooftop and shot down on us. Or two, he should have been playing on the outside of the building. That way, the moment we would have jumped out of the vehicle, he could have blazed us down instead of sitting here in the doorway, allowing us to shoot him without even shooting a single bullet at us. Kind of weird. Yeah, Chad, this should be a good game, man. 11.63 left. Be at, at least a 20. My man said at least a 20. Bro, you have no idea what's about to happen right now, do you? I got right now. Kind of want to hold these guys. Just camping in the subway? No. No, I didn't mean to do that. All right, as far as just finding enemies, again, UAVs is definitely your best tactic. Don't ever do this shit, guys. I don't understand why players decide that these are containers they need to sit in and hide. Stop it. You're better off laying prone in the middle of the open and just ADSing on us than sitting in here and letting us get a better angle on you. And guess what? Throwing a stun grenade and making it an extremely easy kill. And once again, we get a kill where we don't even get shot at, right? Jeez. Got on top of the rooftop right here. That's just pure awareness right there completely. All right, so we have no more trophy, but we do have a buy station next to us. So again, go ahead and get a self res and a UAV, throw it in the air and then get another UAV. Not specifically in that order, but it's definitely the three things you want to go ahead and buy right now. All right, we don't have a trophy system. Um, so it's going to be a little bit more dangerous. We need to find a trophy and we need to get a UAV in the air. Now, when you go to the buy station, we got plenty of money. Buy UAV, instantly call it. And of course, um, if you see anybody near you, go ahead and fight them. But if you have a little bit of time, buy a second UAV and keep it in your reserve. What are the odds that there just happens to be a trophy system laying right there? <laughs> the luck. The luck, man. Now, this is self-explanatory. Go ahead and push the enemy if he's on the UAV. Um, I love the fact that instead of going through the door, he's going to go ahead and change his position. I want you to watch how confused the enemy is. <laughs> now, no, I haven't watched this match yet. I just knew he's going to be confused because that's what people do. People, people live confused. So the enemy knew we were coming to him 100%. He saw us jump out the vehicle clearly because the vehicle went from red to white. And what was the first thing he did? He held the only staircase that's leading to his position. The problem with that is any advanced player isn't just going to go through the bottom door. Not every time. They're going to utilize the entire building layout to their advantage, which is exactly what we did. Bust through the window. And even though we made noise at the window, this dude was clueless, had no idea what the hell was going on, um, didn't give a shit. And again, another kill where he didn't even shoot at us. This just goes to show you that playing smart can actually compensate for lack of skill with aiming. Now, I'm not talking about lens effect. Lens effects a beam or lens. I'm not taking shots, brother. I'm just talking about for most players. A lot of you guys are like, my aim's bad. I'm not really that good of a shot. I just give up, blah, blah, blah. Don't give up. You will develop aim over time for sure. But remember, you can still win games. You can still win fights if you just utilize your brain a little bit more. All right, sitting on 14 kills with 52 enemies left. Boys! Now, in a lot of my how-to videos from months ago, I'm talking about when Warzone was brand new, we talked a lot about different strategies on how to get some, get some good kills. Now, a lot of people aren't out here trying to get 30 kills, but again, if you want a high-octane gameplay, you've got to utilize UAVs to your advantage. The moment your UAV goes out, try to get some money and get another one. That's why it's very important. If you get a UAV in the air, you want to capitalize on it and get a kill. So you can get the money from that team or that player and then get another one in. If you guys are just sitting here calling UAV, the fight's taking too long and the guy ends up running off and you're like, shit, what do I do now? 
and you just wasted too much time and you wasted UAV. If you call a UAV in and there's an enemy anywhere on it, get to him instantly, get the kill, get the cash, and do it all over again. It makes the game way easier. Let me ask you, would you guys rather fight people where you know where they're at, or do you want people to come to you and not know where they're at? What do you think is going to be an easier fight? Of course, hunting the people down where you know their location. Now, this dude here, holy crap, bro. This is going to be another fight. Another fight where literally we're probably not going to get shot. And again, stun grenades are extremely important for shit like this because more people do this than you might even realize. Or you might be doing this too. And if you are, stop. Stop. This is in no way, shape, or form a safe place. This is probably the most dangerous place you can be on the entire map. Stop it. I don't know why people do this. It, it just mind blows me. This is not a strategy. Double stun. Go in there. Boom. Easy. <laughs> I mean, look at him. Does Lens Effect even look surprised? No, he doesn't. Why? Because this shit happens all the time. My man Lens Effect's like, I've been here before, bro. This is nothing new. <laughs> this <is> setting. <laughs> all right. So, got another UAV in the air. Duh. Got another one in the reserve. Duh. And here we are again. If you guys are struggling with solos, this strategy right here will change your life. He's going to jump out and DMR this son, <laughs> this poor son of a bitch right off. That uh, Easy. Easy. And yes, the DMR is broken. And I know a lot of you guys are watching this video with your arms crossed like, here we go again, another DMR gameplay. But you got to realize, I've played with Lens Effect. I know Lens Effect. He's good with every gun, right? But also on top of that, anybody can blaze anyone off with an AR or a sniper when it comes to a quad. That guy there literally came right at us. He was asking for his ass to get served. Um, if you're in a position where you're driving towards a vehicle, you might want to either get off and fight the vehicle also like we did or turn around and reposition to a better location. There's no surprise that Lens Effect jumped out and blazed them down. Not to mention, even with the MAC-10, he could have iced them. Also, going back to the DMR comment, um, everyone's using it right now. It's going to be okay. Hopefully, it'll get nerfed soon, but you can't hate on people for using it right now because if you don't use it, you're going to die, right? So, stop bitching. I mean, you can bitch about the DMR being broken, but don't bitch about, oh, great, another DMR gameplay. Because what, what do you want people to do? Run around with a sock? Come on, man. Be realistic. But we've got $1,300 to get some more money. Unfortunately, we do not have any more money to buy another UAV. All right, right now, we're going to need to get some kind of objective in order to get some more money. We're kindred spirits, bro. Facts. Fact, you need some cash, man. Get, get a bounty. Um, that way you know where a player's at, get an easy kill, get his money, get another UAV, do it all over again. Again, guys, bounties, UAVs. I tell you guys almost in every video to do it. Yet we don't really see it happening that often. Damn. <laughs> Damn, right when he was almost safe, bro. He lit a split second. Got wrecked. That's my streamer. Thank you, dude. That should be a decent game chat. All right, but that dude had a shit ton of money. So now here we are, $9,200, 17 kills. We still have 36 enemies left. Another buy station. Now you can almost damn well guarantee normally there's going to be people here, right? Either on the rooftop, in the doors. And I want you guys to notice how we're going in and we're checking every angle. We're always looking at every door, making sure no one's going to pop out. Pop a UAV instantly. Leave the buy station while it's being called in. Because if you just stand there, you just stand perfectly stagnant. It's calling your UAV. It leaves your body open to getting headshotted. Now, a lot of people look at a gameplay like this and they're like, man, he's super cracked out. No, he's just moving his fingers a lot, right? He's moving his hand a lot. Just keep your body moving no matter what you're doing. If you sit there in a buy station like most people do and you just buy shit, call in your AV, get yourself res, get another UAV, you're going to get shot. This is ballsy. <laughs> this is ballsy, bro. Just because of tower. But it worked out. Tower said, I'm not going to shoot at you anymore. Screw it. Requesting recon. UAV Tower's super focused on the vehicle anyway. Didn't give me the kill for that? Damn. Wait, what? He killed himself with this damn launcher, dude. <laughs> Oh, players, man, players. I just love the fact that Lens Effect, instead of going in through doors and going up staircases, he always approaches buildings and enemies in ways that they cannot expect them to. That guy had no idea we were there until his armor was already broken and it was too damn late. Here we have another guy pulling his parachute a little too early. Yeah, it's bullshit, man. Dude, that's crap. 
If you do damage to an enemy and they end up killing themselves, you should definitely get the kill. 100%. Oh, shit. You, I can't teach you guys that. That's just movement. That just comes again with practice. Oh! That sucks. <laughs> That's so... <laughs> oh, no! You hate to see it, bro! All right, so we're, a lot of shit's happening. So normally, guys, if the guy... Let's put ourselves in the position of the guy on the rooftop, right? The guy on the rooftop. He had the right idea just poorly executed and did it a little too soon, right? So in his position, once he breaks our armor plates, then he could jump down and come kill us. But you don't want to pull your parachute instantly. So a couple of things he did wrong. One, pull his parachute as soon as you jumped off. Get as close as you can to the ground and then pull your parachute basically right when you're about to hit. That way, we can't beam me out the sky, right? Two, I wouldn't even have jumped off and tried to push us until we had a little bit more shots off. He only took out one and a half plates. So we really weren't that damaged, which allowed us to unpeak and blow him away. Should we have been plating up the situation with him parachuting earlier may not even have mattered, but he did play super aggro. So I'll give him credit for that. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Violator. Sick. And I want you guys to see that every time he's peeking out, he goes back in. He keeps peeking back and forth, back and forth. Instead of just standing there slowly in his scope, scanning side to side. This is just, uh, this is just a pure example of separating the videos when we spectate randoms to when we're spectating actual really good players. Now, don't tell Lin's effect that said he's a good player. I don't want to build up his ego any more than it is. Uh, make sure you guys all let him know that I said he sucks, okay? Even though he is a good player. Just don't, don't tell him I said it. All right, we got a ATV. Again, very easy right here. Um, you got to do what you got to do. You have to do what you have to do. This position here, this guy's trying to get safe. He didn't want to drive through the city, so I respect that because he probably would have died regardless. Uh, unfortunately for him, we just happen to have a DMR, and so does everyone else on the map. So we already know the outcome of this fight. Bro, can I please? I'm running out of mouse room. Oh, no, man. You made me look like an idiot. <laughs> oh, damn it. I understand the struggles, bro. You don't have a mouse pad. It's the worst, dude. That's the freaking worst, this guy here. Just sitting on a ledge, staring at us in a scope, shoots us one time. He had the drop on us. He saw us before we did, and still he didn't shoot his gun. That's hesitation. So the enemy in that position, what did he do wrong? He sat on a ledge for too long. He kept his body near a wall, which took away his ability to sidestep back into the doorway. And also he hesitated, right? So what he should have done was stand a little bit further back. That way, instead of us being able to shoot him from head to toe, we'd only be able to shoot him from torso up, as well as if we do break his armor, he could just sidestep right into the doorway, right? Right. But of course, as we always see almost in every spectating video, someone's just sitting on a ledge. The hard part is freaking like leading your shots of this thing is so weird, man. I'm not used to it. I could honestly maybe break my PR here. I don't know if he actually does break his PR. I don't know what his PR is, to be honest. All right, now we're in a position where we're in a kind of a bad spot right we're gonna have to run to the next zone and we're gonna have to run through stadium now this is a very dangerous spot because you're gonna have people camping on stadium dmrs or not it's still pretty dangerous right um hopefully positions like this it comes down to a couple things your skill level your ability to keep yourself in your cover as well as where the enemies are positioned i don't care how good you are at a video game if there happens to be two or three enemies looking your direction with really decent guns um, you're not going to survive most of the time. So let's see how he pushes across. Dude. Going ahead and getting on the vehicle and utilizing the vehicle to his advantage. And I like that. I hate it, but I like it. Look, you got to take the lesser of two evils. I always tell you guys, avoid ATVs at all costs, right? But just like the guy we killed, sometimes you have to take it to cross a massive wide open area because you don't have much cover. We don't have much cover going from here to stadium. So that's what we're doing. So I absolutely love that. Also, there's a mark on the mini map. He's below us. You could tell that by the down chevron or the down arrow below the circle. If you guys did not know that, and I know there's a couple players that don't. Oh, he actually doesn't have any more. But if there's an arrow above, that means the enemy is above you. If the arrow is below, that means the enemy is below you. Right now, though, I'm assuming because it went from below to our level that he just came up the staircase. And now you know exactly where the enemy's at. He might even try to go to the zip line. We'll see. All right, we spotted the enemy, we didn't shoot. Why didn't we shoot? Because we had bars and we wouldn't be able to get the kill, maybe not even the hit. So we're taking the high ground, taking the zip line. Uh, not really, I don't really have a reason. And this should be extremely, close. it should be an extremely easy kill for sure. There he is. Nope, that's not him, that's our shadow, JK. <laughs> I, I don't know where he went, bro, that was weird. Maybe he came back. 
office. Maybe while we were ziplining, he made his way back. There's no way he made it all the way to police station. I refuse to believe it. I refuse to believe it, dude. And also, Activision, can you guys take those birds out of the game, please? I'm tired of trying to like track enemies with my peripheral, and I see a bird, and I instantly like look to the left, look to the right, and I'm like, oh, that, that was a damn bird. All right, we got another UAV in the air. Holy shit, he did make it across. Wow. Oh my God. Camping in a door. Who would have thought? So we've got an enemy in, in the police station that's not on UAV, and we have the enemy that's in the building right next to him that is on UAV. Weird. Once again, we have a video where enemies are camping next to each other, and they're not fighting. Absolutely weird. But that's okay. It'll give us an opportunity to get more kills ourselves. So screw it. <laughs> Why he would stand on the desk and try to peek that is mind boggling. But we have the armor broken, so we're going to utilize this opportunity to push in and get the kill. Pop in the dead silence. I love the fact that Lens Effect is also aware of, of what to do, right? Um, whenever you have the armor broken on the enemy, if you have the ability to push safely, you want to do so. Also, you don't want to wait too long. A lot of players in this aspect would have sat over here by the buy station, which is where we just left. They'd sit behind the vehicle and they would just hold this position because in their head, they'd say, well, shit, we can gatekeep this guy because he's got to move in 38 seconds. And they're right. He does have to gatekeep. The problem, though, is you have stadium to your side. You have another enemy that's also going to come out at the exact same time. So you are putting yourself in a very awkward position if you try to gatekeep in that position. So I love the fact that Lens Effect went ahead and played aggro. And now here we are going to push in the, and kill this Camping bitch, bro. <laughs> Good. All right, and then we heard this guy coming up. That was pretty self-explanatory right there. And la-di-da. All right, at least that guy shot us, though. I'll give him that. At least he shot us, and he wasted a couple of our plays, but we were there to get his. Um, <laughs> But now we got to move in. We got the safety. There's a guy on top of the rooftop right here. Now, look. Problem, again. Sitting on rooftops like these is not the best option. I could tell you guys that he should move to the other side of this, but that wouldn't help him either because, again, we have a huge-ass building right here that he can get shot from. Um, it's just a bad area to be at. Some rooftops you just shouldn't be on. Unfortunately for him, no matter what his position is, he'd probably die regardless. So here is to us having an easy-ass kill. Oh, man. Can we get that execution? Can we get that cleanup? You're damn right we can. Boom. Boom. Now we do have bounties next to us. The problem with the bounties is they're all above us, so I wouldn't waste my time to go for them right now because the circle is closing in. We don't have about 40 seconds to grab them before the circle pushed it out. That way you can have one person ping on the mini-map and also the UAV to let you know where everyone else is at. But right now, because of our position and because of where the bounties are, all of the bounties, and there is another bounty right here, all four of these bounties are above us. So it would take us too long to go ahead and go up these stairs and get these bounties before the circle actually closed in because right now we have about 30 seconds before the circle actually hits. Uh, this area and of course a minute before it actually closes in all together so again in this position where we're at right now in this moment in time your only option is to grab a uav um, and keep one in your reserve as well all right but now we're in a position let's look at the circle now the circle is favoring stadium i always try to tell you guys to avoid stadium at all costs but Sometimes you just have to play stadium. It, it, sometimes it is what it is. Should we have been coming from the north side of the map, then the situation would have dictated a different strategy. But because we're coming from downtown, of course, you want to go ahead and rotate to this side of the circle earlier because downtown's got very limited cover and very limited space. So if we did overstay our welcome downtown, what would happen? The circle would close in, be on the edge of us, and then everybody at stadium would be gatekeeping us. Everyone else that's hiding in downtown would also be able to contest us, as well as anybody who's around this side of the circle also. So I love the fact that Lens Effect is pushing out early, and hopefully we'll get some more kills. But here we are rocking 24 kills with 15, I'm sorry, 14 enemies remain. There's one guy uh, probably on top of stadium, according to the mini-map. So we're basically looking at a circle where there's only three buildings favor. Now, just because these buildings are safe doesn't mean this is where you want to be at. This is where you have to really look at the entire area and play risk versus reward with each location. You have to do it on the fly, right? That just comes with knowing the map and knowing the terrain. So how you want to play it's completely up to you. But remember, if you do go to the buildings, that's where everyone's going to want to go. So that's going to be where everyone's going to be fighting at. So you could run a potential risk of getting yourself into a position where you get pinched. Um, or even as you're trying to get there, you could get caught out in the open. But at the same time, on the flip side, playing out in the open is not always the option. So again, play this edge a little slower. Definitely look for the guy that we're looking for now um, and kind of just see what happens. This is where you really want people to start picking each other off. And at the same time, you want to start listening to gunshots to find out where most of the players are going to be at. So you then can make your decision on where to rotate to and where it might be safer for you. Let's we'll see what Lens Effect does. He's an absolute beast. So he's yeah, going to run this shit for sure. Like 
Yeah, I'd have to kill every single person in the lobby now. All right, so I guess his PR is 36, and yeah, he's gonna have to kill everyone, which unfortunate. Stop! Stop it! Stop pulling your parachute super early. Stop it! Stop! This is dumb. A lens effect, I think, has been shot three of the 25 kills that he has. All right, so here we are now. So Again, the using up. the information to our advantage, using the UAV. We see a guy in front of us. This is going to be an easy cleanup for sure. And we know where four other enemies are at. So there are there are five enemies. We are not aware of their location. Be advised, UAV is bingo fuel. This right here. This is the shit I'm talking about. People freezing up, not knowing what to do. Now, I understand wanting to stay safe, especially it's end game. Your nerves are high. Everything's going high. Your blood pressure spiking through the roof. And you, you want to win. I get it. But... You can remain safe while keeping your eyes on everything going around. Should he have been checking back and forth and around the building, he would have saw lens effect sitting on the tents. He could have gotten in a little bit better of a fight, but because he froze up and just sat there, crouched the whole time, it just allowed lens to come in and use the barricade to his advantage and blaze him down again without getting shot. <laughs> Hello, fuck. Still a good game, regardless. Another guy long parachuting. Stop, stop, stop it. Me too. <laughs> I don't know how many how many kills he actually got shot by, but if someone um, wants to find out, please let me know in the comment sections below and I will pin that comment because I'm very, very confused um, and curious to, to, to how many enemies actually shoot back at us. This is crazy. All right, using vehicles to get to a better position. Awesome, for sure. But the moment you realize there's someone shooting at you through the window and they're getting hits, bail out and use a vehicle as cover. Granted, you may get shot by another guy, but that's the risk you run taking a vehicle and driving it through the center of the circle. So ladies and gentlemen, here we are spectating Lens Effect who's in a 1v4 situation, scanning for enemies, spots one out there. Can he shoot through that and finish him off? Oh, 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 gets the armor break. And Goat calls in a cluster. Now he's an ADS and watch the enemy leave because, of course, cluster coming down. Of course, he's going to move out. Now down to three enemies left. There's probably going to be someone on the southwest side of the circle behind the tree or something in this area for sure. And I almost guarantee it. And I love the fact that we're changing position to re-armor up and use this ledge to our advantage. Now, this right here is a great ridge. However, it's a little scary because when we do have to cross in the open, whoever's up here will have a little bit better of an advantage. But I love this. Instead, again, instead of freezing up, Lens Effect is actually using the information he has to his advantage. And should he not have any info, which he doesn't right now, he's going to rotate in clear areas. He rotated down on that ridge because he knew that there was probably a chance there was an enemy over there. Because, again, enemies love the damn ravines. Guy laying prone. Again, another situation that we ran into just like in the house. Instead of the enemy um, scanning the area and looking around or even moving from position to position trying to find enemies... They just lay there and they wait for people to come to them. And guess what? Like I always say, if you're going to wait for enemies to come to you, you're going to be waiting for the wrong one. And they're going to come and they're going to shit down your throat. Exactly what Lens does. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we're in a 1v2 position. We are rocking 30 kills, going for that 32 bomb. All right, we have an enemy calling in an airstrike. Now, the problem again with calling in streaks just to get knocks and kills is it never works out, right? We did it to get a guy out of a hiding spot to reveal his position. That way, when he moved, we killed him. We were already in the open. All the enemy had to do was shoot at us, try to get the kill. Instead, all the enemy did was alert us of his position. There he is on the mini map. So you're gonna watch Lens Effect rotate along the edge of the gas and absolutely shoot down this kid's throat. Uh, don't know where he's at. There's a guy right there behind the edge. Beautiful shots, but I don't think that was the original guy. I'm almost positive it was not. Still want to scan the left-hand side like he's doing, but I'm pretty sure the guy is over there to his 18 because I don't think he could have rotated that fast to where we just killed that other guy. And there he is. Get the hit. Laying in a bush. Which bush is he in? Who knows? Guy is laying perfectly prone. There he goes out in the open, not even shooting his gun again. Let's fucking go, dude. Giving Lens Effect the easy GG. Lens Effect, brother, thank you for submitting the gameplay, dude. We really enjoyed watching it. I really enjoyed analyzing it. And as always, you're an absolute monster. Now, as far as Lens is concerned, can't really critique anything. You're the damn man. You're the absolute goat. As far as the enemies are concerned, holy shit, bro. Um, don't lay prone. If you're camped up, make sure if you're camping, you're at least scanning around you so you don't allow enemies to run out in the open and get to your building because if you can catch them out in the open, it's an easier fight than if you fight them close range um, when you're camping like a bitch. And thirdly, stop 
pulling your parachutes and floating around like you're in a hot air balloon. That's absolutely idiotic. But again, Lens Effect, thank you for submitting the gameplay and sharing it with the channel and our viewers. If you guys would do me a favor and go show Lens Effect some love, follow him on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz. I'm gonna link it all in the description below as well as the pinned comment. But again, I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, good luck in Warzone. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out one of these two videos right here. And as always, click that button, subscribe today. You have a good one. And until next time, keep on improving.